the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight is a story of the Golden West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. I'm not from this neck of the woods. I, I'm from Liberia in Africa. Hey, well, what's your, what's your handle? Mine's Charlie C. Reed. My handle is Joseph Jenkins Roberts. Okay, J.J., from Liberia, Africa. Let's climb up on old nail gal here and make some slow moves around town. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Lucille Ball, here to make a personal appeal to every American. Since the 1880s, the American Red Cross has been stepping in when there's been big trouble, like a hurricane. But nobody has to tell you the Red Cross is there when a hurricane strikes. So let's talk about the other Red Cross, your neighborhood Red Cross. They teach kids to swim. That's good, Eddie. And they train about every lifeguard on every beach. It's possible to look into it. We can get in touch with the local chapter. They help veterans get on their feet. They help people relocate after fires. Are you comfortable? Okay, now relax. They collect and distribute blood. They give a hand to the older folks in your town and do scores of other jobs. It's running very nicely. It's easy to see why we've got to have Red Cross, and only you can keep Red Cross ready for the little emergencies in your neighborhood. And the big ones. Help keep Red Cross ready. This is Lorne Green. The country we're traveling through is beautiful. No other word could describe it any better. It's spring, 1875, and we're in Wyoming Territory. In 15 years, it'll be the 44th state in the Union and the first state in the world to give women the right to vote and hold office. The Battle of the Little Bighorn is a year away, and in March of this year, the Congress enacted the Civil Rights Law that guarantees everyone equal access to public inns, public conveyances, and the like. I don't think my fellow passengers would be terribly interested in these odds and ends. They all seem to be more interested in what they see out of the window. One of them shows an intense interest. He's had his nose almost pressed to the glass for an hour. Interesting looking young fellow, about 20 or so. Aside from being a black man, he's dressed in a very colorful robe, green, sky blue, yellow, and red. He has a red, green, and black skull cap perched on the back of his head. It would be really interesting to know what he feels about the wild, wide, open West. So much space. The land stretches as far as the eye can see. And when it is no longer level, it becomes hilly, and the hills become pyramids with sugar on the tops. Grandfather and grandmother were right. There is no country like this western country. The sky seems even bluer than our Liberian sky, and there is more land than I ever thought possible. I must sink myself deeply into an understanding of this place, because it is my ancestral home, as much as Africa, because this is where grandfather and grandmother came from. Perhaps I will find some relatives. It does not seem likely. I've only seen ten black people since we left Lincoln, Nebraska. Incredibly, an African tourist of American descent is checking out a branch of his roots. And that's how we begin this particular story, which, though fictional, has a basis in fact. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening, brought to you five nights a week by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. Your hosts, Lorne Green. I'll bring you stories of the Old West and the New. Andy Griffith with a look at the funny side of life. Vincent Price with tales of mystery and suspense. Cicely Tyson with stories about love hate, and related things. Richard Whitmark. I'll bring you stories of pure adventure. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of 
the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, The Afro-Westerner, by Odie Hawkins. Our star, Brock Peters. The word's out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow old beautifully. Thumbs up. It's a sure sign they're fitting fine and feeling good. Thumbs up. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Thumbs up. Get them trim cut, regular cut, even get them pre-washed. The jeans that grow old beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. Oh, thumbs up. What would it cost to replace your car's muffler, including installation? Oh, I'd say about $50. No, wait, $45. It'd be around $30. I guess about $40. The Illuminized Sears muzzler is only $19.99. That's half of what I guessed. It's hard to believe. On a Cadillac? That's a terrific price. With installation included. Yes. Should have known it. Sears. The muzzler, just $19.99 installed. Clamps if needed, 99 cents each extra. Sizes to fit most American-made cars. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Clinging jerseys, tight satin tops, they only look good if they hug your body smoothly. Sears Best Abra Light helps you and your clothes look good. How? Abra Light has no seam cups and straps adjust in the back so you look great up front. Whatever you do, whether it's dashing around town or simmering with disco fever in that slinky dress, it's flattering fun with the Sears Abra Light. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The Power Spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power Spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <coughs> Solid as Sears. The brakes are applied and the train slows down. Ahead, a place that's more than a settlement. The young black man stares out the window. Laramie! Laramie! Is this truly Laramie, sir? As you live and breathe, young fella. Thank you. Joseph Jenkins Roberts of Monrovia, Liberia hopped from the train with three overstuffed carpet bags and stood on the train platform looking and feeling completely lost. Howdy, stranger. My name is Homer Judson, better known to some people hereabouts as Nosy Judson. I'm a reporter for the Laramie Sentinel, and I couldn't help thinking, Homer, this is your human interest story of the week. How about an exchange? You give me your story, and I'll help you find a place to stay. A deal? A deal? Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Joseph Jenkins Roberts, and I could certainly use some help. Couldn't we all? Beg pardon? Eh, uh, never mind. This all your luggage? Yes, I, I decided to travel light. Well, yeah, let's thank the Lord for lightweight things. Come on, partner, follow me. Thank you, I, I appreciate your help. Yeah, well, I hope you'll be thanking me when we get to Mrs. O'Leary's boarding house, but meanwhile, since I seem to have picked up the bag you packed with boulders, why don't you give me your story? Won't you need a pencil and pad? As unusual as your story is sure to be, I'm sure my photographic memory will retain it. All you have to do is talk as we walk and don't leave anything out. Now, remember, the, the Sentinel prints all the news it's fit to print, and that means all the news it's news. Well, first of all, I, I am the nephew of the current vice president of Liberia. Liberia? Yes, Liberia, West Africa. Ah. You, you see, it, it happened like this. Oh. And stay the hell out of here, Charlie Reed. Can you learn how to behave yourself? Hey, go on, Joe. This is Laramie. And lots of people misbehave all the time. Uh, yes. Yes, I know. My grandfather told me about it. You, your grandfather? Yes. My, my grandfather and grandmother were born to slavery on a plantation in Louisiana. Uh, they escaped when she was 15 and he was 18. They have told me their story many times. 
Don't let that throw you. Laramie is full of cowboys, especially on Saturday night. Go on. <laughs> I, I, I must say, the, the atmosphere is much more lively than Monrovia. Uh, you were saying about your grandparents? Oh, oh, yes. They knew that the only way to be free was to make it to a free territory. In addition, grandmother says, grandfather had seen some pictures of a cowboy and, and wanted to become one. Your grandfather had seen some pictures of a cowboy and wanted to become one? Yes, Grandmother always smiles when she says that. At, at any rate, after a, an incredible number of hardships, they made it to this town, to Laramie. They say it is where they began to be human beings for the first time. Oh, it, it would take several hours to tell all the things they went through. Yeah, I can imagine. What year was it that they made it here? It was 1807. They built a cabin near a place called uh, Misty. Oh, yeah, that's about 30, 35 miles northeast of here. That close? Oh, I, I would like to see it very much this evening. Whoa, 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 take it easy. Why not tomorrow, after you've had a chance to get a good night's sleep? Uh, you were saying? Oh, oh, yes, yes, well, they lived in, in this place, Misty. My grandfather, being a curious man one day, found some small nuggets of gold in the stream behind their cabin. Gold? yes. He found gold, but he didn't tell anyone, only my grandmother. For ten years, they secretly panned gold from this stream and others near, and when they got news of people being given a chance to resettle in Africa, they decided to go. I recall that. It was in 1820-something, and the American Colonization Society was behind it. A bunch of hypocrites. Uh, uh, yes, 1822 to be exact. My grandfather and grandmother say that many free people of color were not happy about being offered a chance to return to Africa. They felt, since they had been born here, that no one should think of leaving, or that no one should think of asking them to leave. And there were those, like my grandparents, who welcomed the chance to go. To them, Africa represented a new frontier. They were born slaves and emigrated to Africa as free people with $15,000 in gold. That's quite a story. My grandfather thinks so, too. His talking about his life here made me want to see the land of his birth. My mother and father didn't want me to come, but my grandparents did. Go, they said. Go and tell us what you see. So I came here. And here we are. Now... Don't let Mrs. O'Leary frighten you. She's always a bit much at first, but you'll find she's not as dreadful as she appears. This is the living room dining room where everybody gathers for the five o'clock meal. The guest rooms are upstairs and And here's what Mrs. have you O'Leary. brought me this time, Armor Judson? A wishy donny complicated looking fella in a triple colored nightgown with a Yiddish cap on his head. <laughs> Glory be to heaven. His name is Joseph Jenkins Roberts, and he hails from Liberia, West Africa. And I've already told him that you make the best son of a gun stew and deep dish apple pie this side of the Mississippi. Oh, there you go again, Homer Judson, wrapping your spit around a bunch of words that sound sweet to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long are you going to be staying with this young fella? Uh, well, about two weeks or so, I guess. Oh, primi fashy, that'll give you just enough time to become part of the family. <laughs> Well, come along. Let me show you to your room. I'll take those bags oh, for you. Oh, no, 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 thank you. I, I, I can manage... Come on, hand them, me boy -o. In Mrs. O'Leary's house, Mrs. O'Leary makes the rules. Homer, will you be coming in for dinner this evening? Uh, not this evening, Mrs. O'Leary. I've got a great human interest piece to write up for the morning edition. See you later, Joe. Writers... They always got something to write. Well, come along, Joseph Jenkins Roberts. I'll be showing you to your room. So, you got three names rolled into one, huh? Well, why not? Whoever said we should only be afflicted with two names? Now, you can eat three meals a day, if you like, or only dinner, depending on what your appetite is like. Now, <clears throat> most of my boarders eat breakfast at 6.30 and dinner at 5. Have you a man-sized appetite, Joseph Jenkins Roberts? Uh, well, Good. I, uh... Now then, it'll be $2 for your rent for the week and $3 with meals. 
No fancy women whiskey drinking beyond certain points or serious card playing allowed. And here's your room. Dinner's in 20 minutes, and we're having chicken and dumplings this evening. <laughs> Dear Mother, you must read this letter to Grandfather and Grandmother to tell them that I am finding everything that they have spoken of to be true. I've been here in Laramie for five days now, and so much has happened already that I hardly know where to begin. I am living in a boarding house, owned and operated by a, an Irish lady. She She's very tall has hair the color of rusty pipes, talks very quickly, cooks huge pots of food, and, and is very nice. I think she drinks whiskey when no one is watching. I was taken to this place by Homer, a reporter on the Laramie Sentinel that I met at the train station. I'm enclosing the article he wrote about me. It's the first ever written about an African in Wyoming territory. Homer Johnson is a very nice person. I have not run into any problems of race, Mother, so far. Most of the people are well informed as to who I am and, and what I am doing here. It seems that even those who don't read the newspaper know my name and where I'm from and everything. I guess Mrs. O'Leary is responsible for that. She's like the drums we have at home. Taking Homer Judson's advice, I have purchased a pair of boots to go riding in. I did not tell him that I did not know how to ride. But I will learn. It is late now and I must go to sleep. Mrs. O'Leary expects everyone to attend breakfast. I send my deepest love and respect. Joseph. Join millions of Americans and shop the easy way with a Sears credit card. All you do to apply is call toll-free 800-526-0444. It's your entry to shopping convenience and quality merchandise. Your card will be accepted at over 3,600 Sears stores across the nation. And you can choose from over 100,000 Sears products and services. Even use it for your catalog orders. In the store or over the phone, just say charge it. Call 800-526-0444. New Jersey residents call 800-652-2777 for your Sears credit card. The word's out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow old beautifully. It's a sure sign they're fitting fine and feeling good. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Get them trim cut, regular cut, even get them pre-washed. The jeans that grow old beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. Can't believe you owe the IRS that much. Well, when things just don't add up, you can count on a Sears desk calculator to help you. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Then read the figures two different ways. 12-digit lighted display and tape printout for your records. There's a two-memory system that helps ease multi-step problems, plus its many extras make it a great time saver. Now at most Sears retail stores. Sears two-memory desk calculator. Cut $25, just $99.99 through March 10th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. To look the height of fashion wherever I go requires many coats. But for home, I need only one coat fashion surrounding me. Sears Best Easy Living Interior Paint. One coat of easy living on the walls and every room looks stunning. While I entertain or just relax. Choose from 24 decorator colors in Easy Living Flat Latex and Semi Gloss. Plus bright white ceiling paint for your home. Because with Sears Easy Living Paint, all you need is one coat. When used as directed at most Sears retail stores. Joseph Jenkins Roberts settled in and became a part of the community. It wasn't an instant process. It took a while. There were things to learn, customs to observe. Watching Joe wobble down the street in a pair of the fanciest boots ever cobbled has got to be one of my all-time favorite memories. Being the adventurous type he was, it didn't take much to convince him, being in the West and all, that he should saddle up 
I had a strong suspicion that he might wind up sitting backwards on the creature. I've seen tenderfoots do everything. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't try to climb up on that ornery old saddle sore if I was you. You wouldn't? Why not? Because it just might be the last ride you'll ever have. Now, you just take a peek at that devil's eyes. He's just waiting for you to mount up so he can buck your little old dark body through the roof. Now, you come on over here, bub. Let's pick out a piece of crow bait that'll put up with your inexperience. Old Nelly looks like a good choice. How long you been riding? I, uh, I, I, I never been riding. I, on a horse. What? You pulling my leg? Beg your pardon? I said, are you pulling my leg? You got buffalo snot in your ears or something? <laughs> no. It, it, it's just that you say things in a funny way. Well, come to think of it, you sound a shade strange yourself. That there nightshirt on and that there beanie cap on your head. I take it you ain't from around this neck of the woods. Uh, no, I, I'm i not from this neck of the woods. I, I'm from Liberia in Africa. Yeah, I kind of figured you was from somewhere else. Hey, well, what's your, what's your handle? Mine's Charlie C. Reed, a cowpokes card player fresh out of the calaboose after celebrating a month's trail pay down the drain. My handle is Joseph Jenkins Roberts. Okay, J.J. from Liberia, Africa. Let's climb up on old nail gal here and make some slow moves around town. I'd advise you to hold her down to a gallop till we get to the edge of town. Uh, uh, not from that side, J.J. I see you wasn't joking when you said you never rode a horse. I told you. <laughs> oh, well, we all had to learn sometime. Yeah, let's give it our best shot. Who knows, you might get to liking the feel of a fast horse under you. Charlie, how can I make it slow down? You can't. If you went any slower, you'd be standing still. And quit squeezing that old gal's neck so hard, she'll think you're in love with her. <laughs> Dear Father, I am addressing this especially to you. It is what might be called a man's letter. A few days ago, I met two new people. They are both now my friends. It seems that this is the way it is here. You can be strangers one day and friends the next day, or enemies. My two new friends are named Charlie Reed and Alfred Wong. Charlie is a cowboy. The other day, after we rode to the edge of town and back, Charlie asked me if I had any money. I said yes. He was quite pleased and said, great, let's go into the dirty garter saloon for a little sipping, spitting and cussing. There was tension when we walked into the saloon. From the way the people lined up at the bar stared at me, I felt self-conscious. I will have to buy cowboy clothes and a wide-brimmed hat to go with my boots. Charlie ended the tension by saying, My buddy J.J. here from Liberia, Africa, is buying a round for the house. <sighs> Many of them patted me on the back and said nice things as, as they rushed to get their round. And then someone else bought another round. And someone else another. I, I had to walk my horse back to the stable because I, I felt too wobbly to, to, to ride. I, I don't think I like sipping, spitting, and cussing very much because it, it makes your head hurt the next day. Charlie has promised to teach me the secret of roping and, and also how to shoot straight. Respectfully, your son, Joe. I must admit that I was very curious about this person. I had seen him about town. I had heard much about him, but I had not had a chance to talk with him. Yesterday, he came into my laundry with some of his native robes to be cleaned. The dust of Laramie was ruining them. He wanted to know how I became a laundry owner in Laramie. I told him that I and many other Chinese helped build the railroad that links east and west. After the railroad was finished, I decided to invest in a business and retire here. I can't say that this is a real retirement, but it beats working on the railroad. I have invited him to have tea with me. I forgot to ask him if there were any Chinese in Liberia. 
None of us in the boarding house tried to exaggerate the dangers of riding beyond Laramie city limits. However, we did warn Joe more than once that the outskirts of Laramie had its normal collection of outlaws, just like any other city. He smiled and told me, don't worry, Homer. Charlie has taught me how to ride well. Dad, blast it, Jake. Why'd you have to fill your hand a hundred yards away? Oh, shut up. We've lost him. You and your big mouth. Well, where do we go from here? We keep heading for Texas. As many wanted posters they got hung up in this territory on us. We'd be sitting ducks to stick around here. She spooked that little dude. <laughs> That's downright funny, Jake. Wonder if he can find his way in the dark. Who is there? Who is it? Strong wolf. Wait, don't run. I will not harm you. I have your horse. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was smart to jump off this old nag and hide rather than try to outrun the bad ones. Did you see them, the crooks? I have seen many crooks. Uh, over there is Laramie. I, I guess this is where we part company. Thanks again, Mr. Strongwolf, for, for catching my horse. I... It was not very hard. Well, thanks anyway. What is your name? Oh... My handle is Joseph Jenkins Roberts. My friends call me J.J. J.J., uh, would you like to have a good Shoshone dinner this evening? Uh, yes. Yes, I, I would. <clears throat> Excuse me. That was very good. I, I have never eaten rabbit before. Dog. I, I'm talking about the food we just ate. I know. It was dog meat, one that we had fattened for a guest such as yourself. Oh. <laughs> Moonfeather, bring my pipe and tobacco. I knew she was the one I would marry when I first saw her. Somewhere in a book it is called Love at First Sight. I could tell from the way she returned my look that she too felt the same feeling. My heart was in my throat. Also because I feared the consequences of being attracted to another man's wife. In my country, that is considered something a person should not do. Strong Wolf lit the pipe and passed it to me. <coughs> it's a bit strong, isn't it? For one who smokes it properly, it is not strong. Here, do it slowly, with feeling, peacefully. I see what you mean. It, it is better when you puff slowly. Uh, uh, tell me, Strong Wolf, do, does your wife always spy on you around the corner of your teepee? Oh, Moonfeather is not my wife. She's my niece. And uh, you are the first buffalo man she has ever seen up close. Oh, I, I didn't know. She's very pretty. Already, after only 17 snows, she can skin a deer or put up a teepee faster than many more experienced women. I am proud to be her uncle. Yes. Yes, I, I can see that you would be. Moonfeather. Her name is pretty, too. We Shoshone women have always been known to be direct and honest. I had to let the Dark One know that I had received his eye and returned it. For the course of the evening, he spent talking to my uncle. I made certain that he was aware of my presence. For the first time since I had been taken through the ceremonies for coming into womanhood, I really felt like a woman. This man, J.J., made me feel this way. I looked forward, after that first time, to his visits with my uncle. The women of our camp laughed and made jokes about how much of my heart they could see in my eyes. What have we here skulking around with such heavy circles under his eyes? 
Good morning, Mrs. O'Leary. Am I too late for breakfast? Well, I think we ought to be able to scrape a bit of batter together for a flapjack or two. How's it going with yourself? You look as though you just drank the hair of the dog that bit you. Please, Mrs. O'Leary, don't say that. Morning, J.J. Got a telegram for you. Morning, Homer. What is it? Well? Well, what is it? My grandfather has had a stroke and he wants to see me. Oh. He wants to hear about what I've seen before oh, he... No, no, lad, chin up. I, I must leave right away. Yes, of course, J.J., we will. We'll pray that everything works out all right. How dreadfully cruel the fates can be at 7.30 on some mornings. Truer words were never spoken, Mrs. O'Leary. <laughs> Toward the middle of the basket, you got boiled corn and a bunch of blueberry muffins. And the chicken should last you for a week if you're careful not to eat more than six pieces a day. Now you take care of yourself and don't you forget to write us. I'll be back. We hope so. I could use another Liberian human interest story. All board! Board! But, J.J., I come as soon as I hear it. I sleep at one off under a table in the dirty garden. See you later, bub. J.J., you left two robes. I'll be back. I'll be back. I hate to see J.J. go. You know what I mean. He's, he's been like a son to me. Yep, he's a nice guy. <laughs> but don't worry. He'll be back. He's got a reason to come back, too, or my otherwise unimpeachable sources are out of their trees. <laughs> Moonfeather! Moonfeather! What seems to be the problem here, young fella? There! There! Riding the speckled horse! Uh Oh, so that's Moonfeather. Well, you better best get on the observation platform before that poor engine rides that pony to death trying to keep up with the Union Pacific here. Observation platform? Where? Well, to the rear. Now, careful you don't fall off. Moonfeather! I'll be back! I promise you, I'll be back! Here, keep this ring! I'll be back! I'll be back! I had to let him know how I felt, openly. I rode alongside the train, praying to the person above us that he would see me and understand. My prayer was answered. He saw me and threw me his ring. I knew we would be together then. I did not know how long it would take, but no matter. I knew it would come to pass someday. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. certain foods, plants, and animal products you can't bring back to the U.S. You can't because they're prohibited. They're prohibited because even one of these foods, plants, or animal products might carry a disease or pest that could spread to our crops and gardens and animals with devastating results. You haven't been everywhere on the globe yet, but there's always tomorrow. And before you go again, write for the free booklet that explains the law. Even one can hurt, write for traveler's tips. Write to Traveler's Tips, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Washington, D.C., 20250. It's free. I gained 20 pounds in two months. Chocolate and bean and butter. Yeah, I never lost that weight either. Uh, With me, it was different. I was climbing the walls, yelling at the kids. I just couldn't live with myself. Mm, Neither could Dan, could he? (laughs) No, not really. 
He said having a wife that smoked was better than being terrorized day and night. Huh, better a friendly dragon than a nasty dragon, huh? Right. So anyway, I'm back to a pack and a half a day, addicted just like I was Let's before. hold it right there. The American Heart Association wants you to know that smoking cigarettes becomes a habit, not an addiction. Habits can be broken. Smoking is a matter of choice, not destiny. We can help you quit. You don't have to gain weight or climb the walls. Contact your American Heart Association for a free booklet that explains how to break your cigarette habits step by step. The American Heart Association wants you to know we're fighting for your life. This is Lorne Green, and here's the concluding act of the Afro-Westerner. J.J. stayed home for four months after his grandpa's death, doing as much as he could. Him, the youngest in the family. He returned after six months, no longer the complete tenderfoot. His granddad had left him a handsome sum of money, but he didn't let it interfere with his life. One of the first things he did when he got back was get himself a job, working for the Circle Bar B spread. Oh, there ain't nothing to it, J.J. Once you get past the sipping, cussing, and spitting part, all you have to do is learn how to stay in the saddle till your backside turns to calluses. Try to think one step ahead of a bunch of dumb cows that are apt to stampede at the drop of a coffee cup. Forget about all the comforts of Ms. O'Leary's boarding house. Be on the lookout for wrestlers and don't spend all your money in one saloon. I don't have to tell you how to survive cookie son of a gun stew. You already survived Ms. O'Leary's cooking. I learned. I was determined because I had decided with the money I had inherited from my grandfather to buy some land, buy some cattle, and marry Moonfeather. She was always on my mind, but I, I could not find her. Wherever I came across Shoshone people, I would ask them about Strong Wolf and Moonfeather. I even learned some Shoshone in order to ask questions. They would always tell me that they had seen them in the last moon or ten sleeps away, but they didn't know exactly where they were now. My heart ached to see Moonfeather again. I used to have terrible dreams thinking that maybe she had married someone else. My friends were very sympathetic. Would you like another cup of tea, J.J.? Uh, no, 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 thank you, I... Nothing like a good cup of tea. Yeah. So you still have not been able to find Moonfeather, huh? No, and I... I've run out of places to look. Do not fear that way. There are always other places. I know. I, I, I know. It just seems... Ah, oh. uh, I understand. I don't know if I told you when we last talked. I'm going through a romantic period myself. You are? Yes, my father has selected a bride for me from our village. And I am anxiously awaiting her arrival. Oh, I'm, I'm happy for you. Uh, here is a picture of her. Her name is Cynthia. She is very pretty. My father says she is a good worker and will make a good wife. Are you sure you wouldn't like another cup of tea? One day... Out of the blue, it happened. I had been working the South Range, rounding up mavericks, and was just sort of stumbling back to town, thinking about how good it would be to have a hot bath in Mrs. O'Leary's big brass tub. A couple of Indian braves suddenly appeared and quietly rode alongside me. One of them was Strong Wolf. The other was Eagle Eyes, his brother, Moonfeather's father. I was so excited, I, I could hardly keep from shouting, Where is Moonfeather? but I thought it best to do things the Indian way. They had gotten the word from others about me. I rode into their small camp of 20 teepees, my heart beating like a drum. I saw a smile in the corner of Strong Wolf's mouth. He knew what my feelings were. We dismounted, still without talking, washed our hands in a buffalo hide bucket and sat down to eat. I remember we had wild greens and trout because I was so nervous. I, I choked on a bone. After the meal, Eagle Eyes called out, Moonfeather, bring my pipe and tobacco. She was more beautiful than the first time I saw her. And she was wearing my ring. I could not contain myself. I said to her, you're wearing my ring. She nodded, telling me yes. 
and went back to where the women were. I was so happy, I, I felt like crying. So you returned. I said that I would. Good. We like a person who keeps his word. We sat for an hour, talking about different things. How scarce the buffalo were. What my plans were for the future. Eagle eyes pierced me with his look, listened closely, and only asked one question. Will you always stay in this land? Up to that point, I had not really thought about whether I intended to stay or not. But I said yes, because that's how I felt. After a while, I, I felt I had stayed long enough and decided to leave, asking if I could return for a visit the next day. Strong Wolf looked at Eagle Eyes, and he nodded, ever so slightly. I felt good. I felt even better as I rode out of camp when Moonfeather stepped around the teepee and waved and smiled at me openly. I rode hard and fast to get back to Laramie. I felt I, I needed some courtship advice. My father was far away and, and could offer no advice in this matter, so I spoke with my friends. So our little old African buckaroos discovered skirts. Well, well, well. I am serious, Charlie. We are serious. What does a man do in a situation like this? Really stomp down serious, huh? Yes. Well, in that case, I'd suggest you do the following. Get yourself duded up. You know, slick your hair down. We'll skip that part. Take a half hour bath, sprinkle a heap of sweet me sniff on you, you where your whiskers should be, and... Take her for a stroll in the moonlight. Charlie, I'm in love with her, and I want to marry her. <laughs> well, in that case, you better take a full hour's bath. An Indian woman, huh? I think that would make an interesting column. When's the date? I don't know. I, I haven't proposed yet. Well, if I were you, I wouldn't waste much time. Looks like we're in for a cold winter, if you know what I mean. See you later. I gotta run. Oh, I'll leave your dinner on the back of the stove, Homer. Thanks, Miss O. Luck to you, J.J. Tell me, what do you think I should do, Mrs. O'Leary? Oh, well, now you take that darling girl an armful of flowers. There's not a female heart on the planet that doesn't think well of flowers. Mrs. O'Leary, you're right. That's exactly what I'll do. Oh, the beauty and sweetness of youth. My brother and I had discussed the possibility of J.J. the African and Moonfeather getting married. We knew that he was going to return to her after she was given his ring. We approved of the match. I knew him to be sincere and honest, and I believed with the experience that years give that he would become a well-seasoned man. We were not prepared to deal with his appearance when he asked for Moonfeather with a tall hat on, a beetle coat, and a bunch of dead flowers. We laughed, and afterwards we had a feast, and my brother gave his permission. Later on, after he understood our customs better, he gave my brother fifty good horses, and me, a robe, like the one he had worn when I first met him. Joseph Jenkins Roberts became an authentic cowhand Used the money he inherited from his grandfather to buy a ranch Just a few miles from where his grandparents had lived, incidentally And settled down to raise six beautiful Afro-Indian children and beef cattle I'm proud to say the oldest boy's name is Homer Homer Jenkins Roberts Who at the age of 20 made his pilgrimage to his grandparents in Liberia Liked what he saw and stayed. As the West African proverb says, what comes around goes around. When my brother was my age, being in style meant wearing old jeans and about a pound of dirt. But today, us guys are more sophisticated in our style. And that's why Sears has Style Works. A guy can pick up on the latest styles in jeans, tops, sweaters, and dress your clothes like vested suits. I can depend on the Style Works shop at Sears for just about everything to keep me looking great. And the prices? Pretty reasonable. My folks like that. Style Works. Today's style's all in one place. At most larger Sears retail stores. 
I've been working with furniture for 25 years, so I know about quality. And that's why I recommend a Sears Benchmade sofa for your family. There's a heavy-duty hardwood frame braced to withstand stress. The coil spring construction gives long-lasting comfort. And you can choose from fabrics and attractive solids or bright prints, all treated with Scotchgard brand fabric protector. Compare the quality of a Sears Benchmade with other fine sofas, and you'll be surprised. Styling, durability, and comfort. Benchmade, a great place to relax. Now at most Sears retail stores. This spring for women, the fashion place at Sears suggests these up-to-date separates. They're comfortably casual, yet dressy and light-hearted enough to go anywhere this spring. Margaret mixes Sears textured blazer and a small collar striped shirt with trousers. While Wendy wears a shawl collar blouse and a slim-down dirndl skirt. Color coordinated, these great-looking separates will come together beautifully for you. Spring's mixable, matchable, up-to-date separates. Get them at most larger Sears retail stores. Come, spin the wheel of fashion. Discover a fortune of spring separates at Sears Junior Bazaar. Ah, silk blend skirt and pants in dusty pastels. A blend of polyester, rayon, and silk, making them easy care, wrinkle resistant. Top them off with white on white polyester and cotton blouses. Fashion is your fate at Junior Bazaar. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. You've been listening to Sears Radio Theater, brought to you five nights a week by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. The Afro-Westerner was written by Odie Hawkins, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Lorne Green. Our star was Brock Peters. Also heard were Parley Bear, Peggy Weber, Norman Alden, Len Berman, William Lally, and Marvin Miller. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. What if you went off to college and found that you were different from everyone else and everything was designed for them, not for you? Suppose you went to the library and all the books you needed were in Braille and you were the only one who couldn't read. You'd feel left out, wouldn't you? And what if you went to class and found that there were no chairs because all the other students rolled in with their own wheelchairs? Suppose one of your professors gave his lectures talking with his hands, only his hands, and everyone understood sign language except you. You'd think it wasn't fair. Well, that's how handicapped people feel now when they go to college and find extra handicaps. But things are changing, and we have free information that can help. Write Closer Look, Box 1492, Washington, D.C., 20013. A public service message on behalf of the United States Office of Education. Here's an important tax tip from the Internal Revenue Service. If you're 65 or older, there are some special tax breaks that you can claim. Like a double personal exemption. That's right, an extra $750 for yourself, and still another if your spouse also is 65 or older. And there are advantages if you decide to sell your home and move to a smaller place. There's also a tax credit for the elderly. They're all spelled out in one of IRS's free publications, number 554, Tax Benefits for Older Americans. You can get copies by calling the IRS toll-free number listed in your telephone directory, or you can order by mail. There's even an order form just for that purpose in each tax package. Use it to send for the Older American publication or any other IRS publication or form you need. Tax Benefits for Older Americans. Get all the details now so you can take advantage of the benefits on your tax return. Tomorrow, the Sears Radio Theater is a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Let's listen. I am a talent agent, and I'd like to, excuse the expression, handle you. Why? I mean, why me? I've been around a while and haven't made any headlines of variety yet. I looked at some film on you the other day and, well, I... I thought I saw something. 
So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater.